Hello there, and welcome to Let's Talk About Color, specifically color words. In 1858, future Prime Minister of the United Kingdom William Gladstone published Studies on Homer and the Homeric Age, in which he noticed that Homer's use of color words in the Iliad and the Odyssey was quite unusual. They were sparse and used in peculiar ways, like describing the sea as a wine-red color. In 1880, Lazarus Geiger looked into the matter deeper, studying older texts like the Quran, the Bible, and other Greek and Icelandic texts, and began to see a pattern. The word for the color blue was always one of the last to appear in a language. This would explain Homer's odd description of the ocean, but why was it this way? Why blue? Geiger came to the conclusion that people living at the time just couldn't see the color blue and therefore didn't need a word for it. He proposed that humans refined their color vision over time, bringing the need for new words with them. By the late 1880s, most scholars agreed that people in the ancient Western world had fewer color words than we do now, and generally what order they developed them in. But the questions of why this happened, and whether or not it was a universal phenomenon, remained. Around this time, Hugo Magnus disproved Geiger's theory that the amount of color words was tied to the physical perception of color. He was the first to travel around the world to find and study contemporary languages with fewer color words than the European languages. With a crude interview system, he was able to determine that people with fewer color words were able to see all of the same colors as those who had large numbers of them. In fact, many of these people were even better at differentiating between colors than their interviewers. He noted that in many African pastoral groups, there were a myriad of words for shades of brown and gray, the colors of their livestock, cows, sheep, and goats, but no differentiation between green and blue. They could physically perceive the difference, yes, but they found it absurd to the point of hilarious that foreigners would need names for these colors. After two world wars and an economic depression, the intellectual community grew skeptical of the ability to find certain answers to hard questions. The color word dispute was not spared from this skepticism. Many began to take a perspective of linguistic relativity. The idea was that since each language performs the coding of experience into sound separately, then every language is arbitrary compared to any other language. Especially with languages that are completely unrelated, it is pointless to compare the two. It's all random and we should leave it at that and try not to judge different cultures so much with our Western norms. And while the aim of being non-judgmental is a good one, it doesn't change the fact that the amounts and kinds of color words in different languages are not random. In the late 70s, Brent Berlin and Paul Kay began a massive project known as the World Color Survey, in which they attempted to catalog the color words of as many different languages as possible. They determined that almost no languages had more than 11 color terms, and all had at least two. That means that if color words in a language, both the amount and the specific colors, were determined randomly, one would expect to see in a survey of all the world's languages 2 to the power of 11, 2,048 different sets of color words. They only found about 22. And those 22 weren't even a random selection of the 2,048. For the most part, they followed a pattern. If a language had two colors, there would be one for black, dark colors, and one for white, light colors. If there were three, red would be added, four, green or yellow, five, yellow or green. If there were six color words in a language, only then would there be a word for blue. Berlin and Kay suggested that this pattern also represented the development of color words through time. So it seems that color words do follow some sort of pattern, and are not determined by the speakers of a language's ability to see the colors, but that doesn't answer the question of why this pattern is the way it is in the first place. The most probable answer is that color words vary because some societies don't have needs for certain color words. Red, yellow, and green are colors more likely to be seen and necessary than purple or blue. If you never need to distinguish between a blue and a green object, then there would be no need to have different words to distinguish them. Universally, blue is a very hard color to produce as a dye, and is relatively rare in nature. This makes it a great candidate for one of the last color words in a language. And so the sea would remain wine red. What's the big problem with that?